Well, good morning and praise the Lord, my Pleasant Hill family, and all of those who decided to join in with us this morning on Facebook Live for our Sunday morning worship. This is the first Sunday in the month of December, and it's our Communion Sunday, and we are ready to hear what thus says the Lord. So I want to just welcome everybody in. Hopefully you have had a wonderful weekend. Hopefully you have been adjusting yourselves to the cold weather and the rainy weather. Amen. So we just want to say unto you, God bless you. God bless you. So we hope that you had a great night's sleep last night and you have woke this morning in your right mind and ready to hear what thus says the Lord to see what God has in store for us. Because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Well, go ahead and bless the Lord with me on this morning. Go ahead and give God some praise right where you are in your living rooms, your dining room, sitting out on your patio, in your bedroom. Give God some praise because God is a good God. God is a great God. And so we just want to bless him. We just want to tell him, God, we thank you. Hallelujah to your name. God, we love you and we do appreciate you for all the wonderful things that you've already done. For the things that you're doing in our life. And God, we know for the things that you shall do. So for that, God, we bless your name. God, we thank you so much for being God and being God all, all by yourself. So God, we bless you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we're not going to prolong the time this morning because there's a lot of things that we want to get done on this morning. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to jump into the word of the Lord to hear what thus says the Lord on this morning. Come on and pray with me. Father God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for the sun, even as it begins to peek through the clouds. God, we thank you for such a beautiful day as today. God, we thank you for this first Sunday in the month of December. So God, we just bless your name because you are God and you are God all by yourself. The song says, God, if we search the whole world over, we can't find nobody like you. So God, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being Father. Thank you for being Daddy, thank you for being Lord. Thank you for being a will in the middle of the will. God, we thank you. And so now, God, this morning we ask that you'll just take me down into your storehouse. Give me perfect recall of your scriptures. Give me illustration. Give me direction that I may be used as a conduit, as a vessel, to impart your word unto your people. God, have your way on this morning. God, bless like never before. Heavenly Father, we thank you now. Lord, you are my rock. And you are my redeemer in the wonderful strong name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, grab your Bibles or grab your electronic instruments. Amen. And go with me to the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke. Uh, when you get to Luke, go down to that 22nd chapter. The 22nd chapter. And in that 22nd chapter, slide your finger all the way down to that 31st verse. We're going to be reading verses 31 and 32 on this morning. A sort of familiar passage of scripture for some of us, amen. But we hope that God will enlighten us, amen. Give us a deeper revelation, amen, on what he would say on today. So in the gospel according to Luke in that 22nd chapter, reading at the very at 30, verse 31, you'll find these words written. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now this morning, if I can use for a subject, I will just say to you, faith don't fail me now. Glory to God. Faith don't fail me now. And I know sometimes we go through life circumstances, we go through life situations, and we think we have enough faith to get us through everything that life throws at us. But sometimes, amen somebody, sometimes it feels like our faith is about to give out. It feels like our faith is about to fail. And I want to let you know that sometimes during these seasons, and I will say that these are sifting seasons, when Satan is trying to get the best of you, when life circumstances are throwing things at you that's difficult to encounter, I want you to know that God is still a good God. And no matter what you go through, God will be there with you all the way through. Praise the Lord. If I could just say this this morning, and I think uh, genuinely, everybody wants to be used by God. I would just say that because 
in some way, in somehow, in some fashion, we want to be used by God. Um, I applaud those, amen, who says, well, God is my life and God is my everything and everything I do, I consider him. Amen. I, I applaud you because a lot of folks don't think the same way that you do. Uh, but in some degree, in some fashion, uh, in some capacity, because we want to be used by God, God wants to use you. Glory to God. I'm going to say that again. We, we know in some degree, in some fashion, in some capacity, we do want to be used by God. And at the same time, God wants to use you. Uh, there's a song that says, um, for the rest of my life, I'll serve him. For the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord. I mean, that was when we used to have church, amen. That was when we used to really, really, really set ourselves aside and I mean, just have a real good time in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and I know some of y'all probably even got too cute, amen, to remember that. I know some of y'all have gotten too cute, but listen to this real quickly. For the rest of my life. Y'all remember that? It's been so good to me. Come on, somebody. Come on. to really have church, amen. I, I know I know. some of y'all ain't got so sedated, some of y'all ain't got so cute, amen. You don't know about how we used to have the old church. For the rest of my life, yes God, these old songs used to pull the best out there and you could shout all over the church. But now if it's not my favorite song, my favorite beat, everything right into it, we just don't know how to get with it. But when you hear a song that says, for the rest of my life, it's a testimony because God, I want to live for you for the rest of my life. I love you and I trust you and God, I'm going with you all the way. Glory to God. But, but now this is a setup. Watch this. This is a setup because even though we say those things, how many of us are willing to live it out? When life trials, when life tribulations, when the struggles of life hit you, are you still going to trust the Lord for the rest of your life? Are you still going to serve the Lord for the rest of your life? Well, in today's lesson, amen, it's going, to, it's going to show you that at some point, life will challenge you. At some point, your faith will be tested. And during those times, you got to know that God still got your back. God still has your best. Life. Even when you fail on God, God will never, ever fail on you. Glory to God. Um, I just want to help you because watch this. According to Luke, the 22nd chapter, there are some places and some points in our life where your faith will be tested and you will go through a season of sifting. Hallelujah. This is because Satan has desired, the Bible says, has asked for, amen, to sift you. Uh, and, and that's really an opportunity for God to test you to see where you stand. Glory to God. We know the story of Job when uh, God and Satan was having a conversation and nobody was bothering Job because the devil said Job had a hedge around him and nobody could touch him. But God asked Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? Glory to God. Job was an upright man and, and wasn't bothering nobody living and doing everything right. But God was going to put him to the test. Hallelujah. And we know how that story ends. Satan was able to touch everything around him, amen, take everything that he had. And even his friends came and, and began to admonish Job and said, Job, you must have done something wrong. Job, you had to. Things in your life wouldn't be this bad if you hadn't done something. And Job said, man, y'all don't understand. I've been living an upright life, and God is still my God. And then even the point got so bad when boils was in his skin and, and he had sores all up, and his wife came to him and said, Job, look at you. 
You ought to go ahead and curse the Lord at that. Job said, woman, you don't even sound like my wife. Amen, somebody. You got to know when you trust the Lord and that you will serve him all the way to the end, regardless of what it looked like. Hallelujah. Because Job said, in this world I came naked and naked I leave. But we know that in the end, because Job trusted and his faith stood strong and firm, the Lord blessed him double for his trouble. Hallelujah, somebody. But in, in this lesson this morning, I want you to understand this, that when our faith is tested, when we go through a sifting season, hallelujah, and everybody will, I don't care if you're a minister, a preacher, a deacon, a deaconess, a choir member, or, or even a pew member, there are seasons in your life that you're going to go through. I know this is a holiday season. And while some are going through a holiday season, there are others who are going through a sifting season. Now, now let me digress just a moment and let me explain because Sifting means a few different things. Uh, and then in the season, um, when I get you to understand what sifting is, it's a test to see how strong your faith is in God. If I can use some agricultural uh, background, when the farmers would go out and gather in the wheat, they would sift the wheat, which means that they would break up the good from the bad. They would take what's useful from what's Unuseful. They would they would take away the grain from the, the shaft. Hallelujah, somebody. And, and they were separated. Glory to God. That's a sifting process. Taking out the things that's useful for God or for us, and then getting rid of those things that are less useful. And watch how God sifts us, because some of us, even now during this coronavirus, are being sifted. Uh, quarantining and, and not being able to come in and have in-person worship and sometimes even being social distancing, that's a way of sifting. When you're not in worship on a regular basis, we sometimes stray away. People who's been faithful in all these things, now because there's no accountability, I mean somebody, they'll begin to be sifted by Satan and don't even understand. Folks who've been faithful and tithing all their life, all of a sudden now because you don't see them, we don't talk, folks have just fallen off the record book. Even folk who said, I'm coming by the church every week, I'm going to check on this, I'm going to check on that. And because there is no accountability for everybody every day, Satan is trying to sift you during this season and say, man, I don't even want to go to church no more. Even when church starts back because I've gotten so comfortable not going, I, I just don't think I'm going to go back. I'm going to just watch it on um, Facebook or catch one of the other preachers. I, you can't be so sifted that you don't understand what Satan may be trying to do to you, but you got to allow your faith to stand firm. Yes, God, you said you're serving, so when it gets tough, when it gets rough, will you still serve the Lord? Glory to God. I'm, I'm going somewhere this morning. You got to know what's valuable in your life because the sifting process will take away those things that are not valuable, that are not useful. Amen, somebody. And will try to hold on to the things that are valuable or useful. Um, my mom, when we were kids, would make a cake. And back then, you know, when you buy flour, it wasn't sifted flour, amen? It was just a regular bag of flour. And you would have to get out the sifter, amen? Or something that looks like a strainer. And my mom would pour the flour in the sifter and begin to sift the flour so she could make a cake. Through this sifting process, it would take the lumps, the bumps out of the flour. Those big knots that was in the flour, even she would mash them down, amen, to smooth it out because it would allow the flour to be measured equally, amen, or adequately to get a cup of flour. But if it had lumps and bumps in it, amen, it wouldn't measure properly. And even when you begin to mix it in with the other ingredients, it wouldn't mix properly. But once it's been sifted, hello somebody, then it can mix in with the other ingredients well. I'm going somewhere because in our lives, once we've been sifted, amen, and the lumps and the bumps and the problems have been taken out, then we can blend in well, glory to God, with everybody else, amen. But as long as you got some mess in your life, some bumps in your life, some problems in your life, you usually don't fit in well with everybody else. Glory to God. So sometimes we have to go through a sifting process. My, my, my. It allows us, amen, to separate the good from the less good so that the greater good 
can be on display. I'm going to say that again. It allows us to, to be separated, the good, hello somebody, from the less good, so that the greater good can be on display for the Lord. Mm. Yes, God. S see, watch this. This morning, despite your background, despite your educational pedigree, Despite who you know, despite what chair you might sit in, everybody will be sifted at some point or another. Regardless of whether you stand in the pulpit or stand at the back door, everybody will be will go through a sifting process. Ah. And I tell you this because when we read our scripture this morning, it's going to help us to understand that at the very beginning, God helps you to understand that it's going to be a process you got to go through, so go through it. You, you can't skip this. You can't get by this. You can't go around this. You got to go through it. Let, let's, let's get in the text. The Bible says that while they were sitting at the table in the upper room preparing to have the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper or what the Bible calls um, this would be the celebration of Passover. Glory to God. They sit and they eat. The Bible says that uh, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, this is my body which is broken for you. And then the scriptures goes further and said he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood which is shared for many drinking all of it. And they begin to have some dinner discussions and some dinner dialogue. And he pointed and said, one who dips with me will also betray me. And we know that that individual he was referring to is Judas Iscariot, who sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. But even at the table, after they finished eating the meal, amen, Jesus looks specifically and pays his attention to Peter. And, and here's what he says. Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan has desired to sift you as we. Glory to God. But, but he didn't just stop there. He said, watch this, watch this. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, glory to God, strengthen your brother. Now, now I'm going somewhere because in the King James Version, it says Satan has desired to sift you. In the NIV version, it says Satan has asked to sift you. And if you go back and look at the deeper um, text in the Greek, that word means he demanded, demanded to have you. So this is something you can't get out of because Satan has asked for you and you're going to go through this process, amen, because the Lord allows it to be so. My, my, my. And this is not the end of the story because he said even when you go through this process I want you to remember this. I have prayed for you. Glory to God. And see some of y'all remember the song that we used to sing all the time? Somebody prayed for me had me on their mind took the time and prayed for y'all oh see I told y'all ain't got too cute for me. Y'all, 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 my mama prayed for me. Y'all, y'all don't remember that? Glory to God. Jesus prayed for Simon Peter. He said, I want you to remember that even though you're going to go through trouble, even though you're going to go through trials, I have prayed for you. In my prayer that your faith fail not. Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. Faith, you're going to get into some circumstances and you're going to question your faith. And I'm saying to you, Faith don't fail me now. I need you when, when the rough get the road get rough. When things get tough, my faith has to be firm. My faith has to be strong. So faith don't fail me. Woo! Glory to God. Faith don't fail me now. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. I want you to know in life that there's going to be some ups and some downs. Jesus is telling him, I want you to know that there's going to be some good days, glory to God, and there's going to be some bad or some, I would call, unpleasant days. I want you to know this up front because Jesus is preparing his disciples for a life without him. 
He knew that the imminent damage was going to be done and he was going to be crucified. So he said, let me prepare them to be able to live without me. Mm. Now, now, now that's hard because sometimes we know it's difficult with him and how would it be without him? <laughs> Glory to God. Life's going to be tough when Jesus is not around. But he says and he helps us to understand that no matter what you go through, whether the thick or the thin, that I'll still be there with you when I go away. I'm going to send somebody. Ah, somebody who's just like me in, in the form of me and he'll be the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in you that you'll still have me when you don't have me. Oh my God, somebody missed that. So even though I go away, if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. So I have to go away so I can send the comforter so he'll continue to teach you, to guide you, and to lead you in all things. My, my, my. There will be a time in our life where this sifting process will almost get the, the best of you. Because the God who is in us always walks with us to help us to accomplish those things through us for his will. Ah, uh, if I can say it like this, because the God who is in us always walks with us to accomplish through us huh, his will for our life. My, my, my. When you are in a sifting season, know that God has already made provisions for you. Can, can, can I say it like this? When you are going through a season of struggles, a season of trials, a season of suffering, a coronavirus season, know that God has already made provisions. The provision is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The afflictions of the righteous shall be many, but the Lord has delivered us out of them all. Glory to God. So even though it looked like God is gone and looked like God is not there, know that God is always there because his word said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So faith, faith don't fail me. Jesus prayed for me. Even though Satan had asked for me, the Satan had desired for me, Satan had demanded me, Satan, watch this, Jesus has already prayed for me that what I go through, my faith would not fail. Ah, my God. If we look at this a little deeper, the Bible says, as the Lord talks to Simon, he talks to Simon, not to Peter. Ah, Peter is sitting at the table with him because uh, they're having their last supper. They're, they're at the last meal, and Jesus has washed their feet, in, and they've broken bread together, and Jesus called him Simon, not Peter. We remember Peter. Peter is the one who Jesus said, you are the rock. Ha, oh, my God. Peter is the one when, even back in the book of Matthew, when he said, well, who do men say that I am? And some said John the Baptist. Some said Jeremiah. Some said one of those other prophets. But then he said, well, who do you say that I am? And old loud mouth Peter stands up and he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus tells him, Flesh and blood didn't share that with you. So it says, upon this rock, glory to God, I'll build my church. And so we understand Peter, the knowledge he had of who Jesus Christ was. He said, I'll build my church upon that knowledge. And we know and we read farther that when Peter preached his first sermon, over 3,000 folk gave their life to the Lord. That's power. That's Peter and power. But at the table, Jesus does not call him Peter. Jesus called him Simon. Now, now Simon is his hood name. Okay, let, for, for those who don't understand, Simon is his, is his natural name. His, 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 his old nature name. Jesus knew that he would refer back or, or backslide into his old nature when he is tested. So he don't call him Peter, powerful rock. He calls him Simon, hood, old nature, because he knew that Simon was slack. Ah, and see, some of us, you may carry the title of deacon, you may carry the title of minister, a preacher, a pastor, a Christian, but Jesus says sometimes your nature will cause you to slide back to your old self. I know somebody know what I'm talking about because you may be an evangelist. 
and get caught up in something. And so now you're not evangelist Deborah, you just Deborah. Deborah, your whole nature, because the evangelist part of you, the power part of you, has reverted back to the old you. Yes, God. So that's why he said we die daily to sin. This, so this old nature will be passed away and we bring on this new nature or this new creature. But every now and then, all of us slip back into our old nature. And that's why he said, I prayed because I knew you were going to slip. I prayed because I knew you were going to go back. And when he says that, watch this. He said that your faith fail not. That don't mean you won't have struggles. That don't mean you won't have problems. That don't mean you won't make a mistake. But guess what? In this process, still be strong. You got to go through it, but stay strong. My, my, my. And then he says, once thou art converted, and, and you have to look at the word converted, meaning not once you are saved, because you know they've already, they're already saved. They already know the Lord. But converted means once you are strengthened again, once you get back on the right track, once you get through the trial, once you go through the process, hallelujah, then strengthen your brother. You can't help your brother when you're down. You can't help your brother when you slide. You can't help your brother when you all messed up. But guess what? Once you get converted, once you get your strength back, once you get back on the right track, once you get it back together, hallelujah, Okay, well, maybe you didn't see that. Peter denies Jesus three times. Glory to God. It had been spoken of Jesus. Jesus said, before the rooster crow, you're going to deny me three times. Thrice. So Jesus knew Peter was going to deny him, go backslide. When Peter said, I never deny you. I'm here with you all the way to the end. And Peter denies him on three occasions. Because he's being sifted. Glory to God. But once Peter got his strength back, hey, my God, once, once Peter became no longer Simon, but back to the, the person of Peter, once he got it back together, woo, he said, now we'll take that experience, use it as a testimony, and strengthen your brothers. So when they are weak, when they are going through, when they backslide, when they sit, use your experience, use your testimony to help somebody. Don't sit up there and act like you done got it all together. Don't sit up there and act like you ain't never made a mistake. Don't sit up there and act like you ain't never been through nothing. But go help your brother as they go through because their faith will also be tested. Their lives will also go through a sifting season. And when they go through, they're going to need you to help pick them up. Glory to God. A lot of times our brothers and sisters are going through and we don't even want to fool with them. The Bible says strengthen them. Pray for them. Help them. Pick them up. Push them forward. Don't allow them to stay down in the muck in the mire. You know it because you've been there and because you've been there, you can help somebody else. Glory to God. You ain't all of that. Learn how to humble yourself. And help somebody else. Stick out a, a loving hand and, and reach down and pull somebody else up. Because you know the mess you've been through. You know the trials you've been through. And because of your experiences, you know how to help somebody else get through what they are going through. Don't allow their faith to fail. Glory to God. The other thing I want to point to in that scripture, when Jesus looks at Simon... And says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. The Bible, as you dig into it, says that he's not just talking to Simon. Ah, if you look in the NIV version, he says, Satan has desired to sift all of you. Glory to God. So not just Simon as a disciple, but, but all the disciples. And if we look farther, Satan had not desire to just sift Simon and all the disciples. Satan has desire to sift Simon, all of the disciples, and all of us. Glory to God. So now the scripture is not just important for that day, but it's important even for this day because Satan desires to sift you. Huh? So don't sit back and act like you are exempt from the sifting season. Don't sit back and act like you got an excuse that you won't go through a sifting season. 
season. Hallelujah. Let me, let me push forward this morning because sometimes in life, these seasons where we are being sifted will make us ask the question, God, why, why am I going through suffering? God, God, why am I dealing with so much strain? God, why am I going through these struggles? It, it, it'll cause tears to fall from your eyes because you don't understand sometimes why you have to go through. But guess what? As a Christian, your life will go through sifting season. As a Christian, your faith will be tested. And there's no exemption process. Hallelujah. You may as well go ahead and get ready for it because there's no way to go around it. You will ask God, it just, just don't make no sense. Living the best I can and doing all I can for the kingdom and I'm still going through stuff. Just know that that's how life is. The Bible says we shall have trials and tribulations. It don't say you might have them. It says emphatically that you shall have them. And when it tells us we're going to have them, it's just a matter of when we're going to have them. Glory to God. So, so we have to understand that we're going to get sifted. And when we do, don't allow your faith to fail. Ah, yes, God. I, I want to help us um, this morning as I try to twist to a close because even Jesus went through a sifting season. Yes, God. And he, he began to teach us because he's no longer going to be with the disciples. And after they had supped together or had the last meal or the last supper, he went up to the Mount of Olives. This place is called Gethsemane. And while they were going up to Gethsemane, he took with them his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. And when he was there, he tells them, wait right here and pray as I go on to pray. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he begins to pray, Father, if this cup could pass, not my will, but thy will be done. The Bible said he prayed for an hour and he comes back and he finds his closest ones. His ace moon coon, those who stuck by his side. He finds them sleeping. And he says, uh, Peter, James, can y'all not watch one hour? Could y'all not pray with me one hour? Come on, man. And he goes back to Gethsemane. And the Bible says he began to pray the same prayer. If you allow this cup to pass, except thou drink it, not my will, but thy will be done. This, this is a sifting season because the, the Lord is, is there any other way out of this? Is, is there any way we can get around this? Is death the only answer to this situation? How, can, can we come up with, a, with another reason, another way, another means? The Bible says he prayed till sweat was like blood drops coming from his forehead. After another hour of praying, the Bible says he goes back down and guess what? Those same folks who say, I got your back. He finds them asleep. And so he admonishes them again that could you not just pray with me? Come on man, I need you to pray. I need. And he goes back. The Bible says three times he would have prayed the same prayer. And those who he thought had his back did not have his back. While he's praying, they sleep. I'm going somewhere. While he's praying, where, where are the intercessors? While, while he's praying, where are the prayer warriors? While he's praying, where are those who should be praying for him and supporting him and lifting him up? But guess what? I thank God that Jesus said, I pray for you. The Bible said he is our intercessor, our chief intercessor. He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and for I. And so he's praying for us, but what are we doing? Sleep. And so it's just to let us know that sometimes when you are going through a shifting season, you got to go through it all by yourself. Those folk who you thought had your back, uh, mama them and cousin them, pokey and pokey, lottie dottie and everybody, they done abandoned you and you are all alone. And guess what? You still got to go through it. Hallelujah. But Jesus has prayed for you that your faith fail not. And you will make it through. 
Glory to God. Just want to help somebody because I know Jesus prayed for me. Had me on his mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Glory to God. When nobody else was praying, Jesus prayed. Woo. And I'm so glad he prayed. Oh my God. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he, he prayed for me. He helps them to remember I've already prayed for you. So no matter what you go through. No. I pray for you. And life is going to get so tough that our faith will be challenged and we're going to want to throw in the towel, but faith don't fail me now. It'll get so rough with us sometimes that watch this, watch this, we'll want to scream and we'll want to cuss. But faith don't fail me now. Children, you want to choke them, throw them out of the house and play like they ain't even yours. But faith don't, don't fail me now. Sometimes it look like, feel like, Seems like we're not going to make it. But faith, don't, don't fail me now. Jesus says, when, when you made it through, go, guess what? Go strengthen your brothers. Go, 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 go help them out because despite what it may look like, I'm with you. Despite what it may seem like, I'm with you. Despite what it may feel like, I am with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Even at the very end, watch this, watch this. When friends have forsaken you and friends have turned their back on you, sometimes we feel like even God huh, will forsake us and will turn his back on us. We know when Jesus was on the cross, he felt the same way. His second prayer was, watch this, watch it. Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Woo! So if Jesus felt that way, we will feel the same way. He is humanity, and yet he is deity, and he felt like God, his father, had forsaken him. So I know sometimes when life throws curveballs at us, we feel the same way. But I thank God. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even though you may feel like it, just know that he's still there all the way through the end. Praise ye the Lord. He said, we walk by faith and not by sight. And said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith don't fail me now. I need you. Through the rough times, through the, through the tough times, faith, I need you. When the rubber meets the road, faith, I need you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God this morning because my faith hadn't failed me. My faith hadn't abandoned me, and I hadn't abandoned my faith. I'm so excited that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. I'm so excited that Jesus has prayed for me. It gives me joy to know that he is doing all he can for me. Mm. Yes, God. Uh, there's a, a song that says how he blesses us. And I know that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, telling the Father, oh God, bless, bless my son. But not only bless my son, but bless his family, bless his children, bless, bless his wife, bless his church family. He, he is saying, God bless my son. Woo! And, and there's a song that says, the Lord is blessing me right now, oh right now. See, see that, that's where y'all miss it because we too new. We too contemporary. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Y'all don't remember that? Y'all better come back to the old church so you can remember how the Lord is blessing me. Woo! Glory to God. I just want to help somebody this morning. Hopefully this word has blessed somebody that your faith will fail you not. Hallelujah. Faith don't fail me. Faith don't let me go. Faith don't fail me not. Glory to God. I pray this word has blessed you. I pray this word has touched you. I pray this word has moved on somebody's heart that when you go through a sifting season, when you're dealing with a coronavirus season, a holiday season, anything that may pull you away or begin to sift you, know that Jesus is praying for you, that you will make it through. And when you get through, go back and help somebody else to get through.
Praise the Lord on this morning. Praise the Lord on this morning. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we are in love with you because we know that you are in love with us. I pray that you have your communion elements ready today, amen, that we can have communion, then we'll have our invitation to discipleship, and then we're going to let you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Hallelujah. Grab your communion elements together, amen, grab your bread and grab your wine, and let us go ahead and prepare our hearts and minds to sup with the Lord. We know that at the beginning of this chapter, amen, the Lord began to talk to his disciples after he had washed their feet and brought them to the table at the upper room. And the Bible goes farther to say it this way. The Lord took the cup and he blessed it. The Lord took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. After the same manner, the Bible says he also took the cup and said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Drink ye. All of it. The Bible goes farther to say that if we eat and drink unworthily, we eat and drink damnation to our own souls, not discerning the Lord's body. If Father says, for this cause, many are sickly and weak, and some even sleep. So the Bible encourages us, amen, to examine your own self, not to look at one another, but to look in the mirror of your own life, to see if there's any sin that exists. And I thank God for prayer. Because prayer allows us the opportunity to get rid of all sin of omission and commission that's in our lives. That we can come before the Lord with clean hands and a clean heart. That we can eat with him and fellowship with him without having the concern that we'll fall dead for doing it unworthily. And then he says to them, when you come together to eat, wait for one another, tarry for one another. And the rest, he says, I will set in order when I come. Praise the Lord. So if you have your communion elements together, amen, would you go ahead and take them, grab your bread, the Bible says he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. Is take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Will you eat of his broken body? Father, we thank you for your broken body. We thank you for the stripes that you took on the road to Calvary. The things that you did that we may have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, Lord, because we couldn't do it. And you did it in our stead. Hallelujah. We bless you. The Bible says he also took the cup. Will you take the cup and remove the covering? He said, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for many. For the remission of sin. Will you take the cup and will you drink all of it? Father, we thank you for your spilled blood. We thank you because your blood has healing power. We thank you because your blood has cleansing power. We thank you because you shed your blood for us. Nobody else could do what you did. On this morning, we just want to thank you for sharing in the Lord's Supper, in the Last Supper, in the Passover celebration, for breaking of bread and for drinking of the wine. God, we thank you for your broken body. God, we thank you for your spilled blood that you did for us. Hallelujah. Just want to share unto you real quickly, amen, if there's someone under my listening voice and you have never said yes unto the Lord, we ask this morning if you would give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's all that's required of you to come over on the Lord's side. And when you begin to live for him, no matter what day or what hour you breathe your last breath, 
We know that heaven shall be your home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then I want to share real quickly, amen. I know by now you have downloaded our PHMBC app, either in your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store. And I know that you are looking on with us to see exactly what we're doing here at Pleasant Hill and following on with Sunday school lessons and Bible study lessons, as well as our Sunday services. While you're on the app, I would just ask, if you will go to our Give button, push the Give button and begin to sow into ministry, amen? Continue to contribute with your tithe and your offering that there might be meat in my house, says the Lord. The Bible says, give not grudgingly or of necessity, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And for those of you who may not be a member of Pleasant Hill, we ask that you will continue to sow seeds into this ministry because we know that you are sowing seeds into good ground. And when you sow seeds into good ground, those seeds will come up for you again. Amen. No matter whether you know it or not, God will allow those seeds to come back and bless your life in a rich way. So God, we bless you and God, we thank you for every gift, large or small, hallelujah, that's been given to support ministry. That we may not just do things in this house, but that we may be able to go out and provide ministry to the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the kingdom. And then lastly, amen, we want to just say unto you, enjoy this holiday season. Know that Jesus is the reason for the season. And we pray that you are being thankful and grateful for all that God is doing in your life and to those who are around. Continue to be safe. Continue as you go out to and fro, amen, to social distance yourself, to continue to wear face coverings and to sanitize your hands and other things around you so that not only you'll be safe, but those around you will be safe as well. Well, God bless you. God strengthen you is my prayer. And we pray that this word has been a powerful tool to minister to you on this morning. Well, let's look unto the Lord to be dismissed and we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night at Bible study. Father God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that our faith won't fail us. Hallelujah. Faith don't fail me now. Glory to God. And then we thank you, Lord God, that when we go through a sifting season, that we'll have the power to make it through. And when we get through, yes, God, when we are converted, yes, God, we'll go back and we will strengthen our brother. God, we bless your name on this morning. God, we thank you. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Hug your neighbors, tell them God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night. Praise the Lord.